Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're gonna clean the intake valves on my Ferrari 458 using crushed walnuts. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and that is Adam. He is interwebbing for you. <laughs> and this is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience. And like I said today, we're gonna to clean my intake valves because, well, this car has over 43,000 miles on it, which isn't much in the scheme of things, but because it's a direct injected engine, unfortunately, that means that no fuel gets sprayed onto the intake valves. And so the intake valves do tend to get some gunk and carbon buildup after a while. So we have the intake manifold off on this Ferrari because, well, we were doing some other jobs and so it made a great opportunity to clean the intake valves and so we're gonna do it using crushed walnuts. So we're gonna show you that whole process. I'm a little bit nervous about that because, well, anytime you spray stuff into your engine, it's a little bit nerve wracking. Everyone assures me it's safe, right? <laughs> okay, well, I hope everyone's not lying to me. I mean, it could be just one big joke and I'm just gonna blow up my engine, but we'll find out. But in the meantime, you guys can support the channel by going to normalguysupercar.com. So we really do appreciate it when you guys did it. There we sell parts and services for supercars and actually we sell stuff that's not even for supercars, including boats. So go check it out, use the code NGS10. It takes off 10%, almost everything in the entire store. So we do appreciate it when you guys do that. Like I said, that supports the channel and keeps us going. All right, so there is the glorious intake out of my Ferrari 458. And you can see we also have the bottom tray off because, well, we're gonna have to actually manually spin the engine a little bit. So let me show you everything that we're going to be doing. So as you can see right now, there's some tape covering up the intake holes. Well, we're gonna get my little camera and shove it down in there so you can see just how bad these intake valves are before we do the cleaning and then we'll show you afterwards so you can see how much of a difference it makes. The good news is uh, when we had the valve covers off on the right bank, we kind of noted where the camshaft positions were. So cylinders, what is it? It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think. So cylinders two, three, and four are ready to go because the intake valves are closed. The camshafts were not pointing towards the valves. Uh, cylinder one is open, so we are gonna have to rotate the engine to get those to be closed. Unfortunately, I forgot to check the valve positions on that side, so I don't know where they are. We're gonna have to stick the camera into each of the intake ports and take a look before we spin the engine and see if they're open or closed. My assumption is that we probably have one intake valve open uh, just because of the basic timing on a flat plane crank, the way the math works out. So that should be about what we're expecting. But anyway, let me show you the inside of these valves and then we'll get started blasting them. Okay, so here you can see, this is cylinder number four. You can see that there is a lot of carbon. There's even a, apparently a dead bug flew into my intake. Uh, we'll have to get him out of there. But yeah, so you can see there is carbon deposits all over this guy, pretty gross. Uh, let's see if we can't see, whoop, hold on, get the other side. Oh yeah, there it is. Hold on, pull out a little bit. That's what she said. And you can see, yeah, there's a lot of chiron deposits on this one. Whoop, whoop, it's a little tricky doing this thing. But yeah, there is chiron deposits on this guy as well. So, yeah, that's pretty gross. Okay, so this is my little walnut blaster kit. Uh, some Chinese thing, you know, it's even got Chinese characters on it. Uh, some cheapo thing I got off Amazon. It was like 250 bucks, not too expensive in the scheme of things. So basically, it's just a shop vac that allows you to blow pressurized air in it. So let me show you what's going on. So we pop off this lid and remove the air filter. And basically you throw all of your media down here. And then when we turn it on, we turn on the vacuum and then we also connect pressurized air to it. And here is my little pressurized wand. So this is actually going to route through this hose hole right here. And then we take this end of it, attach one of these fittings and plug this into that intake port, stick that little nozzle down by the valve and blast a bunch of this crushed walnut media in there. And essentially that just theoretically acts kind of like a sandblasting, but it's less abrasive than sand, obviously. So we don't want to actually score the intake valves. We just want to knock the stuff off of there and then of course we want to suck it back out. What do the instructions say, Adam? Okay, YouTube. In the uh, owner's manual that came with this, it says 
Uh, generally, vehicles need to be cleaned of engine carbon when running for two years or driving four W kilometers. So if you drive four kilometers, you need to decarbon four your engine. Four W? Four W kilometers. Now, at the back of this thing, it also says, this manual has been carefully proofread. If there are any errors or misunderstandings in the printing, the company reserves the final explanation. <laughs> All right. So uh, these instructions are clear as mud on how to do this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm very happy to see that they uh, good customer support there. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna kill this. <laughs> yeah. Gonna... Yep. All right, YouTube. We've got media dumped into the bottom of this thing. Uh, we've got our little hose thing. So uh, we'll get it set up and start blasting. If there is a problem during use, please contact us. Please report your name, address, phone number, product mod model, and name, and describe the problem in detail. We will service you as soon as possible. Ooh, Ooh. I, like, I like being serviced. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So check it out. Here is the basic setup. We've got the little adapter into the intake port we have the rubber hose and then we have the spray gun which you know just going to use vacuum pressure when it blows by to suck the media out of this so we're going to turn that on and uh, give it a shot so pray for us i'm about to blow crap into a very expensive engine i didn't have a set of uh, safety glasses like this so he gets the full face mask <laughs> Let's do this. All right, let's rock. This will give me nom flashbacks to the yeah. military days. Can we take a look? Whoa. I can see shiny. Definitely some still in there. It does look way better though. Yeah, look at that. There's no black. It's actually metal. Yeah, there's a bunch piled up we're gonna have to get rid of but all right you're gonna love this check this out you can actually see into the intake from up top there look at that that is amazing there's still a couple chunks of walnut so we're gonna do a couple more blastings but it is like completely shiny <laughs> that's ridiculous okay youtube it is looking really really good in there i took some pictures with my phone and uh it's kind of hard again to see with the camera because well uh, the camera kind of but you can see we're going to move on to the next cylinder and I will get you a picture of before and after. But so far, I am extraordinarily happy with this. I am shocked at how good it works. All right, we got cylinders two, three and four done over here. So we're going to go take a look in these to see which ones we can actually get to without rotating the engine because we, again, didn't look at the camshaft profile before putting on the valve cover. That was dumb, but should be pretty apparent which ones are open, which ones are closed. Just a couple tricks I'm learning. So. Uh, you definitely kind of, you know, move this thing up and down. Uh, make sure you've got a lot of pressure. It definitely seems to clean better when it's got good pressure. And then afterwards, I'm actually able to take the nozzle attachment off and shove that right up in there almost to the valve to suck out any remnants. I mean, the good news is it's crushed walnut, right? So if there's a tiny bit left in there, it's not gonna hurt anything because that stuff's gonna just burn up in the cylinder. So that's the whole reason we're using crushed walnut, not sand or anything like that, because if it does a tiny bit make its way into the cylinder, it's just gonna get burnt up. All right, so I was just about to uh, keep going on the process, but I sent the pictures to Josh and he said, hey, use a plastic tool and knock some of those big chunks off and it'll be a lot better. So I actually took some trim tools because I don't have a plastic pick, but I was taking these two trim tools right here and reaching in there and just kind of scraping off some of those big chunks and holy crap, we got it way, way, way cleaner. So I think that's actually the way to do it is knock the big chunks off using a stick first. Plastic. Then, yeah, plastic, metal. make sure it's plastic. Don't use anything metal. And then, uh, then blast it. The other thing is uh, we're finding doing quick bursts. So just like not even one second, like that seems to work best because it just flows a lot better. If you hold it down too much, all the media just backs up in the tube and then it's not really flowing really well. So that seems to be the best for us anyway. All right, check it out. That is the valve prior to being walnut blasted and it is quite disgusting. We're actually gonna take a, a little plastic stick and scrape some of that big chunks off because the walnut blasting doesn't seem to work to get that stuff off, but it will get it clean once we got all these chunks out of there. So I'm gonna scrape it up and then 
walnut blast it and you'll see it's amazing. Really want to make sure you move it around because there's gunk everywhere. So high, low, right on the valve, up in the intake port, all over the place. And then just kind of reach in there and vacuum out as much as you can. And now it should be good to go. So we got six of the cylinders done. Now we have to actually jack the car up in the air and then rotate the crank so that the cams are off of the lobes and those valves come shut. So we need cylinders one and seven to shut. Right now those are open. So I probably need to rotate the engine about 180 degrees and that should rotate the cams 90 degrees, which should easily get them off of the cam profile. So yeah, anyway, that's the theory. We'll give it a shot. So just so you know, uh, the way that I was able to turn the crank is actually I had to use a screwdriver and stick it in the starter teeth and then gently rotate it one tooth at a time. Uh, there is no way you can get a wrench onto the bolt that's on the harmonic balancer. It just, it's impossible. So that's, I think your best bet. Just take your time, do one tooth at a time. Well, there you have it. We are all done. Got all eight cylinders. That was not nearly as bad or as scary as I thought. It just, it does take a while just because each time you clean a cylinder, it takes a couple minutes and then you got to recheck it. So uh, have a cell phone, a mirror, flashlight, all that sort of stuff handy. Uh, you're definitely going to need some plastic scrapers. That was definitely key. So scraping off the big chunks definitely was the, the right way to do it. You scrape off the big chunks, then blast it. And then I kind of would go in again, scrape it again, and then blast it again. And that seemed to do it just about right. So you definitely need to do probably two or even three goes with the walnut stuff to get it to just come out. After all that, the valves look incredible. I can't wait to start it up and see if we actually picked up any horsepower. Bet we did. A lot of you with direct injection engines are probably wondering, well, what can I do to prevent this? Well, we're going to install an oil catch can in the next video. So we're actually going to install two of them, one for each side because there's two PCBs on this car. So we're going to do that in the next video. You're going to want to stay tuned for that. But that pretty much does it for this video. So you can see it's not that big of a deal. The problem is, of course, you have to remove the intake to get to it. Removing the intake on this car did suck. That was not fun. So I would say if you do have one of these 458s and you start approaching the 30, 40,000 mile mark, it might be worth doing. I don't know, it remains to be seen how much power we pick up. I think if you're gonna do that, you might as well send the valve covers out to get painted because by then they're probably pretty flaky. So that's kind of the good news is you can kind of hit all of the things with one go. And then of course repaint your intakes too because that Ferrari crinkle coat paint just falls apart and then just get it powder coated. Once you get it powder coated, it should be good for pretty much forever. Overall, this is a big job. It is a pain in the ass. You wanna stay tuned for the next video when we install those oil catch cans, but you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking this video. We do appreciate that. And of course, go check out normalguysupercar.com. 
We love it when you guys buy stuff from our store because that does support this channel. So thank you so much. Don't forget to use the code NGS10. It'll take off 10%. But you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We're gonna have a lot more car stuff coming for you. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. It will be sweet. It's gonna be sweet.